Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. You know it's time for the High Risk Wrestling Recap coming at you every Sunday. And we're covering the week that was, and that we'll be covering the week of July 9th, 2023. Let's get into the news. All right, so Warner Brothers Discovery has some expectations for Collision's performance, and they just need to rank somewhere in the top five on shows Saturday night. I don't think that's going to be hard to do. They've consistently, for the, this is the third Collision, third or fourth Collision, um, they've been in the top, so things are going well, uh, WWE sales have seen an unprecedented peak, uh, not reaching a boom since the Attitude Era. It's it's really it's really something to behold. Merchandise sales are up, uh, attendance is way 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 up. Even the viewership is up, not to the level of the Attitude Era, but things are up. And I'm going to attribute a lot of that to Triple H after. Uh, the main event of Raw Monday, there was a backstage uh, kind of argument, disagreement between the people involved in the main event. It was just a difference of opinion. Some things, apparently some things were getting changed even before the match even started. So, uh, th- th- you know, these guys are professionals. KO, Sammy, Seth, Priest, Finn. They know what they're doing. And it's just, you know, it happens sometimes in the business. Brian Pillman Jr. is no longer all elite. His contract has expired. And uh, what's next for uh, the second generation superstar? Well, he was just spotted training at the WWE Performance Center. And I can definitely see him joining the E. Kind of wonder what's going on with Griff Garrison. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, they're in deep talks with AEW about expanding this a little bit more. And part of that is more uh, pay-per-views. Now, I know AEW, they don't want to do monthly pay-per-views. But I can see them maybe doing six a year and two month gaps in between and still doing the TV specials like Battle of the Bells, Fighter Fest, um, Fight from the Fallen, things of that nature. But it looks like this relationship between AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery is working out. Nick Wayne, the wrestling prodigy, is now officially all elite. He had his debut match this past week, taking on Swerve Strickland. And AEW has just announced, well, not they have announced, but we got news of backstage of a banned moves list. And it's not even a really banned. Some things are just outright banned, but other things that are, are you have to go over them with the agent before your match. And like, okay, we can approve this. We can't approve this. But some of the things are, you know, um, spots and uh, bumps on the apron, uh, table out of chair spots only with padding, uh, power drivers, high risk, top rope moves, throwing people over the announce table so on this it's a it's a really comprehensive list and they already do these things down we're not going to see any major changes just being safe and uh having some precaution and the wrestlers didn't know about the band list until they heard about it until there was a report but again these are just things that they already go over before matches that they go over with the agents and the producers of the matches so Again, uh, some of the things we've seen already happened on, you know, collision. So we're we're we're, we're fine. Uh, All in will be on Bleacher Report live, so it will be on the pay per view. I know I will be watching, and we finally got news um, about it, and it's 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 selling. Well, they have sold over seventy five thousand tickets, and in some uh, really crappy news uh, at the AAA events last night Don Callis was attacked by a fan and yes it's a tribute to him being very good as, at his job but no don't attack the performers it's very very simple uh, he has suffered a neck and ankle injury due to the attack and he has uh, medical attention and seeing as how we're talking about the attack let's move over right into the 
uh, injuries real quick. Elton Prince got injured um, on SmackDown last week, and uh, he was sent to uh, in the to the turnbuckle, and he got hurt. So we'll see what happens at the injury. Looks like it might be a head injury, but pretty does be kind of been on top right now. Wish them all the best. Megan Morant is back on WWE after donating her kidney. She was donating her kidney to... She's donating her kidney. It's great. It's great. Megan Morant is back in the E. Now she's after recovering from uh, donating her kidney. Steve Macklin's torn groin injury won't require surgery. Uh, he will be out for the foresee of the future we have no timetable on his return ratings uh collision did pretty well this is the uh episode that main events is with cm punk and samoa joe they did 580,000 years of the 0.21 and the 18 of 49 demo that's pretty good raw this past week they did 1.8 million viewers of the 0.56 and the 18 of 49 demo dynamite they pulled in 825,000 with a 0.29 of the 18 or 49 demo and smackdown pulled in 2.1 million viewers with a 0.54 and the 18 to 49 demo what can i say man smackdown it was it was even a mid show but they still did tremendously in the ratings that's the news and we shall be right back So it was um, an okay week, a so-so week when it comes to our wrestling. We had some highs because there's always highs. And of course, we had some lows. So let's dive into it. Monday Night Raw, we kind of had just the middle of the road show. The Judgment Day, they opened up the show. Um, Finn throws a fit and leaves. And Rhea's like, this is Judgment Day issues. And they just solve this backstage. Seth is waiting and chomping at the bit for the Judgment Day to implode and he will face Dom later. That doesn't happen because, well, well, we'll get to it. And Rhea will fix things. If it's not clear to anybody, Rhea Ripley is the leader of the Judgment Day. They go as she goes. Um, Drew McIntyre and Matt Riddle defeated Imperium. And Drew, Drew come, Drew's coming for, uh, he's coming for Gunther. Uh, Finn and Damien attack Seth backstage and Kevin Owens the same to make the save so clearly we're going to get a six man tag match as the main event Ricochet and Logan Paul have some words with each other about going by or any yada 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 but Logan Paul tries to attack Ricochet Ricochet ducks him and hits him with a slice bread on the outside so clearly we're getting a Ricochet Logan Paul match at SummerSlam uh, Zoe Stark defeated Becky Lynch after a distraction from Trish, and I'm happy to see Zoe get a W. Uh, it's fine. Becky can take the L. She won't be hurt by it. She can use her star powers to make another star. Maxine Dupree's graduation in the Alpha Academy. It's done, done very well. It's hilarious. Um, it's funny. Otis is great as usual, but the Viking Raiders uh, attack causes a quick distraction, and Valhalla takes Maxine's jacket. I really thought this feud was over after last week. Shayna Baszler squashed Emma. Ronda Rousey comes out to attack her, but she escapes. So we're, we're heating this feud right on up. Cody cut a promo about Brock Lesnar. The Miz defeated Tommaso Ciampa in a no DQ match. If he got some help from Bronson Reed. And I thought Reed was done with the Miz. So it looks like this feud isn't over. Looks like Ciampa needs some help. And if you need some help, well, you got to go do it your Self. Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green defeated Caden Carter and Katana Chance. Like, I'm happy Sonya and Chelsea got a win, but it didn't have to be at the expense of Caden and Katana. I just I just wasn't feeling it. And the main event, the Judgment Day defeated Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Seth Rollins. Over on Dynamite, we had the debut of Nick Wayne. Uh, that was the main event match, not the main event segment. And... This was a solid show. So the first match on the evening was Chris Jericho versus Commander. Jericho won. Uh, Don Collis comes out and they good over old times. They show Don Collis shows Jericho some video of you know their time together when they were young. And Collis still wants him to join 
the family. This is interesting. This is very, very intriguing. MJF and Adam Cole. We got a vignette about their friendship. They're at the club. They're playing video games. It's funny. It's working. These two have been great together. Roderick Strong's like, are you really falling for this? He's like, no, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, and then he gets a text. Adam Cole gets a text from MJF saying that uh, he saw Big Bill on Brian Cage and he's, he's now sick. He's he's trying to weasel out of their match. It was it was pretty funny. Um, Sammy Guevara and Dan Garcia defeated Orange Cassidy and Darby Allen to advance into the blind finals with a little assist from Swerve Scott, Swerve Strickland. Sorry, uh, MJ Cole and Adam MJF and Adam Cole defeated Big Bill and Brian Cage to advance to the finals. Jake Hager is upset with Jericho and he turns in his hat. Remember, Hager really likes. That had Ruby Soho defeated Sky Blue clean to advance to the Owen finals. Uh, Swerve Strickland defeated the debuting Nick Wayne in a fantastic match. In our main event segment, we got to know who the fifth members were for the Blood and Guts match. So the fifth member for the BCC will be Pac, the forever Kenny Omega hater. And his history is there. There's beef there. And while everybody's beating up on Kenny Mix, like, look at the screen, look at the screen, which doesn't make sense. But the fifth member for the elite will be, we all guessed right, Kota Ibushi, Kenny's best friend. So the Golden Elite will be reformed. And yeah, the Blood and Guts match is set. I'm kind of expecting the elite to win. Over on Impact, we had our Slammiversary Go Home show. So Zach wants to defeated Chris Bay. And remember, the stipulation was if Chris Bay uh, lost to Zach Wentz, then Wentz and uh, his boy would be added into the tech title match. Wentz won, and the Rascals want to be added. And Santino's like, I never agreed to that. You just assume that. It's not wrong. SB Bell, Mike Bailey defeated Kevin Knight. Joe Hendry and Yu Yamura defeated Kenny King and Sheldon Jean. Leo Rush wants to win titles, which is why he came back to Impact. Moose and Brian Myers defeated Rich Swan and. Uh, Sammy Callahan, Deanna Peraza defeated Jody Threat in a nice little warm-up match, and then all the women that are involved in matches on Sunday got into a brawl with Trinity standing tall. And we end with Scott D. Moore on a phone, on his phone, asking yo, that PCO can't come back from the dead this time, but can you? And we hinted at this. So, what you know is when people in Impact are go, go away, they usually die and they go into the undead realm so they can always just come back. So you got to figure out who is coming back. We'll go over that in the Slammiversary results. And oh, look, it's the Slammiversary results. So on the countdown show, the Death of Dallas and Jody Threat defeated uh, Giselle Shaw, Savannah Evans, and Jay Vidal. Kenny King defeated Joe Hendry to win the Impact Digital Media Championship. And then on the main card, Kushida defeated Jonathan Gresham, Mike Bailey, Kevin Knight, Alan Ayers, and Jake Something in an Ultimate X match to become the number one contender for the X Division Championship. This match was Okay, Killer Kelly and Masha Slamovich defeated the Coven to win the Knockouts Tag Team Championships, which was pretty much to be expected. Scott D. Moore's partner, none other than Eric Young, back from the day. They defeated Bully Ray and his partner, replacing Steve Macklin, Cody Diener. Leo Rush defeated Chris Sabin to become the X Division Champion. This was just stupid. This was just, it was just dumb. Um, Subculture defeated ABC, Moose and Brian Myers, and Rich Swan and Sammy Callahan to become the new Impact Tag Team Champions. Eddie Edwards defeated Cass, which I did not see coming. Really thought Cass was going to win. Uh, Trinity defeated Deanna Peraza to win the Knockout Championship, which was to be expected in the main event. Alex Shetty, Shelly retained against Nick Aldis to stay as the Impact World Champion. But we got one more return, and it was the walking weapon himself. Josh Alec Zander, who just said he's back over on Ring of Honor. We had a shortened show. Big Bill defeated Serpentico. Athena defeated Ava Lawless. The Righteous and Stu Grayson defeated Levi Knight. Michael Allen, Michael Allen, Richard Clark. That's one one name. And Evan Rivers. Uh, Layla Hirsch defeated Bambi Hall. And Layla Hirsch feels like a big deal in the women's division now, as, as well. She said Dalton Castle defeated Tony Nese to advance to a TV title shot finals. Uh, Shane Tyler defeated Sean Dean to advance to that same finals the kingdom defeated the boys and in the main event the NBC defeated Darius Martin Christopher Daniels and might Matt Seidel over on Smackdown this is one of the weaker shows that we 
had uh but jay uso arrives alone we got news that jimmy has some torn rib cartilage and he's gonna be out indefinitely so the opening segment was charlotte and bianca saying that you know bianca's gonna defeat oscar and then they both agree to have a world championship match at SummerSlam. just completely excluding oscar i hate how much of an after the oscar feels as the champion i just i can't stand it i i can't stand it pretty de- deadly defeated the brawling brutes Grace from all the hypes up his recent history you know even though he lost the match to edge he swam and now he's gotten a little beef with the rock i'm expecting the rock to be at SummerSlam. i i just am uh bailey defeated selena vega in a quick match and then shotzi on screen shaved her head and it's going to be a good character change for shotzi and also the reason shotzi's shaving her in real life is that her sister's going through chemotherapy treatment for cancer just a way to support her sister so good on shotzi jay uso has some words with solo and paul Heyman. And Heyman's like, you're acting like a tribal chief, but you're not a tribal chief. And he talks to Jimmy, uh, uh, Solo, and Jay fight. And then Jay super kicks Heyman. This is good stuff. Quick segment, about 10 minutes to continue the bloodline. No Roman, but Roman will be on SmackDown next week, which will be on FS1. And he and Jay will go over the rules of engagement for their match at SummerSlam. Santos Escobar defeated Butch, Grayson Waller, and AJ Styles in a fatal four way to advance to a U.S. title final. I guess the winners of another fatal four way. Uh, AJ, AJ Lee, AJ Lee, AJ Styles had the match won, but Karrion Cross attacked the OC backstage. And AJ just left. Never check on his boys. Um, the fatal four way next week will be Sheamus, Ray, LA Knight and I oh camera grabs. Uh LA Knight came out and cut a tweener promo. The dude is just super, super over and in the main event. Of course, Oscar and Bianca for the women's championship ended in a no contest because all the women got involved. Charlotte, Bailey, EO, EO tried cashing in again and it didn't work over on Rampage, Keith Lee and Dustin Rose defeated 2.0. Taya of Valkyrie won a squash match and then challenged Tony Storm for the women's championship at Battle of the Belts. Lance Archer defeated Trent and he threatens to beat up the best friends and end them unless Orange Cassidy is an international title match at Battle of the Belts, which Orange Cassidy obliges. obliges. Takeshi defeated Kenny Omega's childhood friend, quotations. Mentalo, the Dark Order, says it's time for a change and they're over Hangman using them for support and then just turning his backs on them. And Willow Nightingale defeated Athena to advance to the Owen Cup Finals and by winning this match, he gets a title shot against Athena at death before the signer over on collision more uh more big fight feel uh this show actually gets a two thumbs up this is probably the best show of the week ftr took on the bullet club gold defending their world tag team championships in a two out of three fall match and ftr retained but this match was nothing short of spectacular uh willow nightingale defeated ruby soho in a shocking victory to win the women's side of the owen hart cup qt marshall assures powerhouse hobbs that he's a man of his word kings of the black throne won a squash match and then andrade comes out for his mask oh he needs backup quickly and in the main event ricky starks cheated to defeat cm punk to win the owen cup and he was acting real healer she grabbed the ropes he like snatched the, the 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 trophy from Jushin Thunder Liger on the stage. This was this is weird. This is such a weird random heel turn. It, it is battle of the belts. Of course, there was nothing of any council was happened happened because championships never change hands at battle of the belts. They just don't. Orange Cassidy retained the international championship by count out against lance archer he claimed that daddy ass will get another trios titles match in two weeks tony storm retained the women's championship against ty after some help from ruby and we missed the end of this match because calgary was going through some really really bad storms so the feed cut out uh, we had the owen hart cup celebration with willow and ricky starks in the main event luchasaurus retained the tnt championship against sean spirits our matches of the week with so much wrestling i really thought we would have more matches of the week but we um we didn't from dynamite we got swerve strickler versus nick wayne and you knew this match was going to be great i've seen nick wayne wrestle before 
his debut on Dynamite, so I knew what to expect, and it was just really, really good. I'm happy also Swerve got a win. Um, from Impact, Speedball Mike Bailey versus Kevin Knight. This was shockingly good. This was this was a shockingly good match. From Rampage, Willow Nightingale versus Athena in Owen Cup semifinal match. I love the aggression that these two women put forth, and I can't wait for the Ring of Honor match. From Collision, the two out of three falls match for the World Tag Team Championships between FTR and Bullet Club Gold. This joint went 50 minutes, almost hit the 60 minute time limit. This match was awesome. It is already a match of your candidate. And they topped their match from the week before, which is already ready, very good. Man, man, oh man, oh man. FTR does it once again. And from Slammiversary, Alex Shelley versus Nick Aldis for the Impact World Championship. So we had some solid, solid wrestling this week. Some, some shows were mid, but our matches of the week, man, go check out that FTR match. Please go check out that FTR match and please go check out the Swerve Strickland and Nick Wayne match. And our star of the week, um, I kind of want to give it to FTR on Bullet Club Gold, but I'm going to be fair and give it to Nick Wayne for making his debut. And this man is going to have a bright, bright future in pro wrestling. He's only 18. But thank you all for listening to the High Risk Wrestling Recap. Don't forget to check out the socials, Charismatic Creations on Facebook and YouTube, Charismatic underscore Creations 52 on Instagram, the 215 on Twitter, Coffee, Patreon, and of course the High Risk Wrestling Podcast every Saturday. As always, Zylee, Wendy Chu, Shotzi, Blackheart, Bailey, Willow Nightingale, Isla Dawn, and Gigi Dolan. Holla at your boy. Peace.